and, and that kind of thing, so that's fine. So today, uh, we continue, and we're, we're coming along towards the end of this journey um, in this passage of, of Scripture. We've been in the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, we're, we're kind of getting close to wrapping it up, and, and I'm hitting a couple of things today, and it's not anything that most of us, I, I'm sure most of us in the room have heard the first part, and, and then as we get into some more of it today, uh, many of you again will probably be like, oh yeah, 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 I know that, or yeah, 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 I've heard that. And so I just want to challenge us all, including myself, as I'm, as I'm saying these things, that it's not me, that it's God and His Holy Spirit speaking through me, so that let every ear in this room hear, every ear that's online hear what the Lord is saying today. So with, with my situation, we all have situations. My situation, my current situation is I have uh, five kids and I think 10 chickens. So I don't, I don't know how that worked out. But uh, yeah, I've got five kids and, and, and 10 chickens. And so in my family, just let, let's have some honesty time. If you ever have uh, conflict or some issues or sometimes people are nasty to each other within your home, just raise your hand. All right? Some of you are lying. <laughs> all right? Some of you all don't want to play the game today. That's all right. But some of you are with me. So here's the thing. We, we know that we're supposed to treat one another well. But my goodness, it is so, like, some of the basic things that God gives us and lays us out in his law is so hard. Just the basic stuff. Like, we're supposed to love God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbors yourself. So here's the thing. Most of us are really selfish. So we should be able to love other people really good. If you, if you use that train of thought, like... I know how to love me real good. I know the things that I want. I know the next car I want. I know what I want to eat. I know what I want to wear. Like, I know all those things about me. I know how to love me really, really well. But when it comes to other people, right? I mean, even, even in the, di I'll, I'll just confess to you guys, even the dynamics of my family, right? Even if I know my wife's love language, I fell so many times at thinking about her love needs over my own. Anybody else? Amen. Anybody with me? Amen. All right. And so like, it's so, it's so easy to just love ourselves. And so I wanted to lay this, this groundwork this morning because that's the first thing. If you have your notes today, the first thing is how we treat one another is important, right? And, and that's kind of the thing, like, it, it is, but it's so, it's not one of these things that's just super difficult. Uh, as we've been doing this called series, um, or not series, but as we've been doing kind of this challenge over the last several weeks, called, right, the whole idea of this is every single one of us is called. God's called us to do something, and, and we believe at our church, we also believe part of that calling is somewhere in the body of Christ, maybe you're an arm, maybe you're a leg, I'm not going to talk about all those body parts, but, you know, we all have different gifts and abilities that we're supposed to use within the body of Christ. So we've been kind of challenging everyone. Hey, where are you called to plug in? Where are you called to serve? Where does God want to use you? Because you have strengths, gifts, talents, all these different things. But man, sometimes it's so easy to just get wrapped up in what we want to do. We can lose sight of what we're supposed to do, of what God's called us to do, because we can be so wrapped up and just distracted by us. I mean, if you don't understand that concept, you could just think, you don't have to say this audibly, but for those of you that have social media, those of you that don't, you won't understand what I'm saying. But for those of you that have social media, how easy is it for us to click on something, we blink, yawn, oh, I need to use the bathroom, and what? It's been three hours. It's easy to do that. You can just start. You can start and it can suck you in. And I don't get on that much, but when I do, man, they get me with like these crazy videos where someone's about to jump the reels, right? They're about to jump and it's like, oh, dude, that dude's about to just explode everywhere. Like he's not going to make that jump. And so what do you do? I need to know. <laughs> I need to know if he makes the jump. And so we can so easily get distracted. And I think that happens in our life too when we're called God's called us to do something for some of you in this room maybe he called you to do something a year ago five years ago 20 years ago or longer but maybe this this whirlwind of life you've just kept scrolling and you've 
You've just gotten distracted. All right, that part wasn't in my notes, but you guys can just have that as a little side extra. I don't know why I said that this morning. So we're going to jump right into our scripture today. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 7. And as I said, we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount, and we're just going to keep rolling. So this is, everyone probably knows this, as I said earlier, this is the golden rule. All right, so this is either going to land really well, or there's going to be an awkward moment. So let's embrace either, okay? Everyone on three, let's talk about, say it out loud. What is the golden rule? One, two, three. Okay, somewhere, it landed kind of in the middle of what I thought it could have been. And so that's not too bad. It wasn't silent, so I appreciate that. Some of you guys are playing with me this morning, right? You're playing the game, I appreciate it. So yeah, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. So here's the thing. The golden rule is so easy. It's this great concept. Not only is it this easy, simple, like elementary concept, right? I feel like on a, not even a daily basis. My wife would probably say like every three minutes, every three seconds, we're trying, we're, we're like fussing, sometimes yelling like, don't hit, don't bite, don't try to throw your, your brother down the stairs. Don't, you know, like all these different things. Like constantly, all the time. And these are, my, these are my little people, right? I love them. I love my kids. But it's like constantly, all the time. It's like, look, we just, we just talked about this. You just got out of timeout. And, and you've been there for three years. So like we, we just... We just talked about this, and you just did it again. Like, what's the, like, I want you to have the fun things. I want, you want video games? Right? See, I've got a philosophy on video games. And so, my philosophy, well, I can't actually say that. That's for another, that's for another day. My philosophy came from my wife, and let's just say she gave me two options. I could play video games, or I could, something else. And so, uh, <laughs> so... My philosophy has been a little skewed over the years. Um, I don't know if that's fair, if it's right. Maybe we need to go see somebody about it. I don't know. But, uh, but here's the thing when it comes to, to, to the video games with the kids. Like, that's a reward. They don't get them all the time, but every once in a while they get them. And so it's like, hey, if you want to do the fun thing, because that's what they love. Or my, my oldest, she's beautiful, and she's not dating until she's married. So young guys in the room. You don't have to worry about that. But, but she's awesome. She's beautiful. She wants to, like, have friends over or spend money. I mean, she makes money. She spends money. She's like, yeah, baby, I made that money. I'm spending that money. And so, like, she likes to do those kind of things. And, of course, she, she at this age, she's 13. She's got a phone. And so uh, we're navigating those waters. And so, yeah, you, you got the phone. That's awesome. So you got this thing. But all you have to do is, is like, be nice to your brother like, don't kick him. Don't do these things. Don't yell him. Don't say mean things to him. Just be nice. <laughs> if you're a parent, or you know parents, or you've seen a group of kids anywhere, <laughs> I think that should cover all of this. It's a simple thing, but just be kind. Put someone above yourself. It seems so simple. But here's something that I've kind of figured out. They have watched us their whole lives. Oh, crap. <laughs> then they're kind of in trouble, <laughs> right? Because what are we displaying to our next generation? What are we showing them? Are we showing them that others are better than ourselves? That we want to love them like we love ourselves? That we would lay down our life for our brother or sister? Or they say, no, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to make sure I'm good. I'm going to make sure I'm taken care of. And so even those simple things, and it's so crazy because it says, this is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. You take, it's like 600 and something laws in the Old Testament. I don't know, it's something bonky. It's like crazy. There's no way that we could ever accomplish all of those things. We couldn't do it. It'd be, it'd be hard even if we tried our best to even accomplish the Ten Commandments. But Jesus knows that we are flawed and we need to come back to the basics. So he says, this sums up all that is taught in the law and the prophets. 
just do to others what you would have them do to you. See, it's a simple thing, but man, it grips us at our core because there's a reason. If we dig a little bit deeper, and we don't have that much time, but if you dig it a little bit deeper, there's a reason why we don't, right? There's a reason why we don't. All right, we're going to keep going. How we treat others matters, so treat others well. That's that first line there. Jesus is not saying, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Jesus is saying not only does it matter how you treat others, but everything in the law hangs on it. We'll keep going here. Now, <clears throat> the narrow gate. You enter God's kingdom only through a narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide open for many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road that is difficult, only a few ever find it. Man. See, I can stand here and say this boldly. You know why? Because I didn't write it. Right? If you ever have one of those kind of, even, even if you yourself struggle with some of the things in here, hey, just be okay because you didn't write it. You, you, some of the things that are in here are going to go way counterculture some things. Right? Some of the stuff in here is going to go way counterculture our self-love. Some of the things in this book are going to make us sacrifice things, lay down our life for things, surrender things. But here's the thing. We didn't write this. This is an inspired book by God, and some of the words what we're reading today are actually Jesus Christ's words. And so here's my point from that this morning is treating others well is the harder path, right? Because he's talking about treating one another well, but then right after that, he talks about a narrow gate and a wide gate. So, so as I'm reading this, as I'm breaking it down in my own study, I'm trying to take this all in together, and so I'm saying, okay, treating others well is the harder path. That's what he's saying. He's giving us a very clear picture. Like, it's super easy. You want to climb the ladder? You want to make other people look bad so you look good? That's wide open. But if you want to treat others the way you want to be treated, that's, that's, a, skinny, that's a skinny doorway. You got to work. You got to do some difficult things. You might have to get down. You might even have to crawl through something to make it happen. Here's another thing that some of us need to hear today. Treating others well, it's not only the harder path, it's the lonelier path. Because some of us in here may be like, it's just easy, like we want to be with the people. We want to feel that, I want to feel connection. Post-COVID in 2020, that's one of the biggest things that is killing people's hearts passions mind is loneliness loneliness is like a new epidemic loneliness all kinds of studies point to it loneliness is gripping people and so it's really hard not only is it hard but it's lonely to go the path that god calls us to go down now as it sounds shiny and fun it just doesn't it doesn't sound shiny and fun it's harder and it's lonelier but it's filled with life. It's not filled with destruction. We're going to keep going. The tree and its fruit. This is verse 15. Beware of false prophets. Now, this is important. I'm only going to touch on this a little bit, but it's not just talking about Billy across the street. It's talking about prophets. So the way that I read this today, like I don't know many prophets, so the, the way that I read this today, I'm, I'm thinking like Pastor Ray, myself, anyone that teaches. I think for our kiddos, even like teachers, small group leaders, whatever we have, like those are people that are bringing God's word. They're, they're, they're opening up this word to, to whoever it is, and they're teaching. Anyone who's teaching these different things, right? So I think he's talking specifically. Now, after this chunk, I don't have this. It'll be next week, right? There's gonna be two other pieces he talks about. One of those is discipleship and people. But this first chunk is talking about prophets, teachers, different people that have been elevated, and God's given them this opportunity, this influence. And it says, beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. Man, I don't know what your stance is, and I don't want to go there, but I know the evils in this world. And I know that the evil one has got wolves all over the place. And I know firsthand, because I'm with young people all the time, 
there's a lot of wolves dressed as sheep in their lives. You can identify them by their fruit. That is the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. That's just a statement. That's like a statement of fact, right? He's not like in the gray area. Well, I don't know. I heard about Susie's like, uh, you know, plants and, and even though they had bad soil and all the things like, I mean, they, they actually had some fruit that was pretty good. No, Jesus didn't do that. He, he didn't give all these like, you know, situations that were specific. You know, no, he said, no, a bad tree produces bad fruit. The fruit is the stuff you can see. And so that's evident. This is Jesus talking. This isn't anybody else. This is Jesus talking. He's being so clear and specific here. And so he says, a good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. What's our fruit look like today? What is it that other people are seeing in our lives? So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. So here's just a couple thoughts that I had on this, guys. Treating others well is good fruit. Right? When we treat others the way that we want to be treated, that's good fruit. And not only is that good fruit, but you know what happens when somebody walks by and they're hungry? Not hungry, they hungry. <laughs> right? They see the good fruit and then they see some bad fruit. I'm real hungry now. I think I want some of this good fruit. You know what, though? I saw this, this ad <laughs> and they were talking about this gross looking fruit. But that's what happens. If the things that we saw and the things that we let fill our mind and the things we let fill our heart and how we talk and how we act and how we live and how we display our fruit, if we only knew that sometimes we're displaying bad fruit or if we only knew sometimes in the circle of, of our life what we listen to, all those things, we're eating bad fruit. If we could just see it like it was laid out before us on a table, if we could see it that clearly that we're just, some of us just every day, we just eat bad fruit so treating others well is good fruit our fruit doesn't lie our fruit doesn't lie you see I've got this little note in here and it's kind of making me laugh as I'm reading it milk does a body good but fruit preaches Milk does a body good, y'all, but our fruit preaches. And so every single one of us, you may not believe that you're a preacher. Every single one of you actually are preaching. You're preaching something. Your fruit's saying one thing or it's saying something else. Every single one of us is preaching, guys. Our fruit reveals our root. Your fruit in your life reveals your root. Now, I, I've tried to do... Uh, this is kind of embarrassing, but if you came into our corner of Mount Holly, uh, we have tried to do in like a 20 by 20 yard what I think uh, Magnolia tried to do in Waco. All right, so we've got like raised beds, we've got uh, beds in the ground, like garden stuff, we've got 10 chickens, which if you are a part of my HOA and you're here, just, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, sometimes you just forget things. But we got some, we got some. <laughs> Hey, you need some eggs? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. And so, uh, and so listen, listen, listen. We got some chickens. And then uh, uh, what else we got? We got stuff. We got, well, we got a vineyard. I call it Wallace Vineyards. We have a privacy fence. So I'm just like, let's use the fence. So we got them wrapped around the fence. And uh, some of them are bad. We started getting these spots. And I can't remember what it's called right now. Some of y'all that are, uh, you know, better at this than I am, you're more seasoned, you would know. But it's some kind of rot, some kind of some kind of rot, and it's got these spots on it, and I saw it, and I'm like, what in the world are these spots? And so I saw it, and then Bethany did all this research, she goes, oh, no, that's not good, it's some kind of rot something, 
And I'm like, that's not good. And so, they, oh man, I'm telling you though, they were looking beautiful. These things were awesome. And so we started to see these spots and she did all this research and she's like, you gotta cut it off. You gotta kill it. I'm like, well, how much do you kill? And she said, you gotta kill it until you don't see any spots. So if it's here and it started to spread here and it started to spread here, you gotta cut all that stuff out. Or it's just gonna keep spreading to all your, your grapes and your vines and they're not gonna be any good. And I was like, well, that's dumb. I'm going to look up something else. <laughs> but my reaction is what so many of us do, and it's what so many of our young people do when culture and biblical truth hit. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to, I don't like that. What you just said, I didn't like, and I didn't want to do. So I'm going to find something that says, if you just blow on the grapes, they'll get better. <laughs> and so I did some different things, and, and lo and behold, like, all of our grapes are bad. <laughs> so, if I come here in a few months with, like, some Wallace bottles of wine. But, if you're part of the HOA and you're here. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no. So, if, if you don't cut the stuff that's bad off, it's, gonna, it's going to affect the whole thing. And so I continued to see this happen. And so, guys, our fruit doesn't lie. We've got a, we've got a team in our student ministry. Um, and right now, I can't, I can't remember the exact numbers. We've been doing calls, and some people have stepped up to join our team. And we've got a handful of incredible people. And so this is, this is a snapshot. We're going to watch a video in just a second. But this is what we did at the end of our season. So we took a break for the summer. I say break, but if you knew all the things we did, it's just a break from our norm normal programming. And so our last night together, we, we set up this kind of video shoot where we had small groups come in and kind of talk a little bit about their leader. And so I can just say right now, I don't even know what our rosters look like, but I can tell you the truth that our kids our babies, our preschool, our elementary, our middle school, our high school needs people who are not wolves in sheep clothing, and they're willing to say, you know what? I love you. I love you as much as I love myself. I love you so much. I love doing this thing, but maybe on a Sunday for one hour, I'm going to kill that thing because I love you more than I love myself. I love you so much. Maybe I'll take this one Wednesday for a couple hours and pour into the next generation that needs it so desperately and so you guys check out what our young people said about their small group leaders you got that oh <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what do you love most about your leader oh Miss Tracy's house. Maybe. Yeah, Miss yes. Tracy's yes. house. Like, oh, like on Christmas. And we went to Miss Tracy's house to make to, Christmas. And then she got us the little bags too. Yeah. Megan looks mean, like she has a resting mean face, but she she has a soft spot for us especially. Going to Chick Fil A and also yeah, going to Target. Got to play video. Going to Seven Eleven. I feel like she's a mom away from mom because like. Sometimes I want to get away from my mom, but she'll also like be super fun and she'll be like my aunt, honestly, because she'll give me like stuff to say and like information that I might need to know, but she'll also be super fun at the same time. Um, just his like ability to come up to the kids and just start a conversation. Not many adults can really do that, especially not in our like age. My favorite memory of our like group is when we were at 180, we were at Daniel's house and like we were talking about something and so she goes into her room she comes out with like her matching pajamas she looks great with a fake like bang and it was like it was like the best thing ever i like that they really try to connect to like yeah. who we are as like teenage boys they really try to like under understand a lot better than we my favorite really was like the first time when miss laura brought like the journals and notebooks that was really nice. Yeah. I like when she like makes everything like fun and like you can understand it well. And she always like brings some like everything she talks about. It's not just about her. It's about like every other people. So she includes everybody, and she just makes everybody like happy and like bubbly. They like they actually enjoy like talking to us. They don't like kind of force it. They welcomed all of us, even if some of us aren't here all of the time. But they always are welcome want to hear what you have to say. I love their enthusiasm for our lessons. 
One thing I'll always remember about my small group leaders will be the support, um, just the simple text before a game day or graduation day for us um, meant a lot and then just learning more about Jesus. 7-Eleven was mid. Mid? 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 Oh man. So hey, what we do and what we say matters. You may not realize what they pick up on, but they pick up on a lot. And so uh, this is something I, I don't know. I, I don't know that I've ever shared this on a Sunday morning, or if many of you would even know this. But this is this is the fact right here. Is over fifty percent of our students that come on a Wednesday night are not connected to Point, Point Church. We've got an incredible opportunity, and it's wild. We saw this explosion, and what happened is kids who came here invited a friend. That's awesome, but then we saw crazy stuff happen because then that friend invited a friend, and then that friend invited a friend, and they're way separated from church, y'all, but they come here because they've got love, they've got community, and we point them to Jesus every single week, and so I don't know where you're called, but there's opportunities all around us. All right, I got one story, and then we're going to be wrapping it up here in a minute. Now we're going to jump into Luke chapter 7. This is kind of our Jesus story that ties in with our actions and treating others the way that we want to be treated, and it's about our fruit. One of the Pharisees, this is chapter 7, verse 36, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down and ate. When a certain immoral woman from the city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet weeping. Her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisee, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. See, there's some people right now, they may come on a Wednesday, and they might look at some of our young people and say, what are they doing at church? But we want all kinds of people to come to this church. I don't care your background, what you're about. We want you to come to this church because we believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father except through him. And we want you in the room so that you can hear that truth. If you're not in the room, you're not hearing the story. So it's important for them to be here and to be loved and to be, to be accepted. So I'll continue. <clears throat> then Jesus answered his thoughts. That's so wild. Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. See, Jesus would do something. He punches you in the mouth, but he does it so well. <laughs> right? I call it a spiritual drop kick. Right? I've had many spiritual drop kicks in my time. He says, then Jesus told him a story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to another. But neither of them could, replay, re, could repay him. So he kindly forgave both of them, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved, more, loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one whom he'd canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman. See, so you got you to gotta think. In the story, the way that I played out, and I have to keep reading this over and over again because little things sometimes stick out. So Jesus is kind of sitting at the table like this, and his feet are out like this. And he's sitting at the table, he's eating, he's talking to, to Simon. And so his feet are upright, and she just kind of comes behind him. She just kind of comes, didn't make a big spectacle out of it. She just came, she probably tried to sneak in as low as she could, just came in and just started weeping. And he didn't do anything. Jesus isn't scared of our ugliness. Jesus isn't going to go, oh gosh, you just confessed something and I didn't know you did that. 
That's not going to happen. And so she starts crying. And then she's wiping his feet with her hair and she's pouring this perfume and all this is happening. And he tells this story while she's still weeping and crying. He's just sitting there. Now my feet are ticklish, so I don't know how I would have reacted, but like, (laughs) but like he's sitting there and he tells this story, didn't even acknowledge her yet. And then it says, then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust off my feet. But she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with a rare perfume. Mm. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. Well, you may be here today, and you may be like, hey, I'm not perfect. You don't want me with kids. You don't want me students. You don't want me serving anywhere. I'm just kind of like here. Someone keeps bringing me. (laughs) Look, your sins, even if they're many, God absolutely loves you. Jesus sees you. He knows you, and he loves you. So she has shown me, or she has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little is shown only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. The man, the men at the table, the table said amongst themselves, who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? That's a big thing, and we don't have a ton of time to get into that today. And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So this is the wild thing. All right, I think about sometimes when I come into the presence of God, you know, I want to be right. And that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. But he wants to see you exactly where you're at. No matter where you're at this morning in your life, if you were listening to the songs and you were like this, I'm sorry, but I just can't help but think, you know, you're sipping your coffee. That sounds good, man. I'm not trying to beat you up, but look, this is what Jesus says. You... I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown much love. But the person who is forgiven little shows only little love. When we have an opportunity to come with brothers and sisters in Christ, man, we can go crazy. Some people went crazy at a Panthers game that looked terrible yesterday. And they still go crazy. They jump up and down. They'll do all kinds of weird stuff and get all dressed up. But we, whoo, all right, I have my coffee. I can pray the Lord now, whoo. All right, I'm going to say, man, God's doing something good. Man, that song, that's real powerful. (laughs) Yeah, it'll get you. There should be something inside of us, right? Because we've been forgiven so much. Now it's different for all of us. Some of us, we're so jacked up by his love and his grace, we just sit there on the floor, and maybe we're just weeping. Maybe we just don't know what to say. Maybe we're just in awe. But it's a little bit more than just sipping our coffee and saying, okay. It's just a little bit more. It's just a little bit more when he jacks us up and he spiritually drop kicks us in our heart. See, here's a couple things, and then we're going to start wrapping this up. Jesus knows our thoughts. See, just like Simon, you may be sitting there kind of thinking some things right now that you're hearing. Jesus knows your thoughts. Jesus knows where you're at. He knows your past hurt. He knows your current hurt. He knows your future hurt. He loves you exactly where you are, and he knows your thoughts. Here's the other thing. Jesus knows your heart. See, Simon, I'm a Pharisee, and I'm going to ask this guy over to my house. And he already had doubts, because if we read the scripture, it says, if he was a prophet... That was his thought. If he was a prophet, he would know this woman and wouldn't let her touch him. He had doubts. He invites him into his house and still has doubts and doesn't really respect who he is. He knows our hearts, y'all. He knows our hearts. So here's the thing. This is something maybe somebody needs to hear. When we minimize our sin, we minimize the Savior. And we got to call our crap what it is. We got to confess it. Because when we minimize our sin, we minimize our Savior. 
and we minimize the sin, we minimize our grace. We minimize the sin, we minimize his mercy. When it's just like, oh, no, that's cool, everybody does that, it's not a big deal. When we minimize the sin, we minimize the Savior. When we acknowledge and confess our sin, we worship and praise our Savior. There's something powerful, y'all, when we can confess. And so I'm going to take a moment as we're about to wrap up here, guys. And we've got, we got another video, so we've got a couple minutes, so don't, don't leave yet. But i got two questions. How's your heart and how's your fruit? How's your heart and how's your fruit? Only you know that, right? Now, there may be some people in your life, they can tell you about your fruit. And so if we want real honesty time, if there's somebody beside you that you love and you trust them and they can be bold, you just look at them and say, hey, how's my fruit? And if they give you the, mm, then you know it's time to confess. So this is what I want us to do. I want to give somebody an opportunity today to receive and accept this kind of love and not have those doubts like Simon had. To not invite a savior into this place. Maybe you were invited to this place and you've just been here. He's got so much more for you than that. There's something that in, it's in your life. There's this moment. There's this spiritual drop kick. And maybe for you today, it's right now. And so if you guys would just close your eyes and bow your heads just for a moment. Maybe it's a young man. Maybe it's a young girl. Maybe it's the oldest person in the room. I have no idea. But I just pray right now, God, that as you're speaking to somebody, you would rattle them. Do something supernaturally right now in them that lets them know they've got bad fruit. They might go to church, but they've got bad fruit. They might go to church, but they minimize their sin. And by default, they've minimized their Savior. Maybe they've just been playing church and they don't even have you as their savior. Maybe they've gone to church for years. Maybe they've just been playing this game, but they have never surrendered. They have never kind of come before you like this woman with all of her baggage, with all of her guilt, with all of her sin, with all of it, and just laid at your feet and just confessed that they need you, they love you, because it was that act of faith knowing her lifestyle, knowing that she would be condemned, knowing that she could be stoned, knowing that all this stuff could happen as a, re- as a response, as a consequence to her going into this room and laying at Jesus' feet. It wasn't the oil. It wasn't the tears. That didn't save her, God. It was the faith that she had to step into the room. That's what saved her. So there's someone in this room today, God, I believe that needs to take that step. They need to get right with you. They need to confess. And they need to let you be Lord of their life. So we're going to do this in just a second. With everyone's eyes closed, nobody looking around. If that's you, if you need to stop playing games today, I'm going to count to three. Don't wait. We're not going to hesitate. You just shoot it up. You know it's you if you're there. If that's you, you know. Today's the day. Today's your drop kick. On three. One, two, three. If that's you, slip your hand up. Father God, we thank you for the people in this room today. God, you're a good, you're a good father. We love you. And so those that have raised their hands, God, I just ask that you speak to them. Those that that maybe wanted to, but didn't, God, speak to them. And for those of us that are in the room and we call you our Savior and Lord, God, just challenge us today. We know it. We hear it. We know this golden rule to love others as we as, uh, as we want them to love us. We know this, God. Help us. Help us to just take one step today towards that. We love you. We give you all the honor, and we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. So the so what today, guys. And as I say the so what and now what, we've got a video and a song that we're going to do. And so don't leave. Don't run away yet. It's important. So this is what I want you to do. I'm going to say the so what, now what. I want you to take your phone out, scan the QR code, and just, if you haven't done this yet, we're still, look, this is still a thing I'm called. All of us are called. So I'm challenging you right now. Take your phone out, 
scan the QR code, hit I'm called, and just sit there. Don't hit anything else. Just sit there for a second because I want you to watch the video. And as the song goes, I want you to sit there. Don't worship during the song. I want you to sit there and ask God, God, if I'm called, which I, I know scripture says I'm called, where am I called to be? So the so what, we can pretend with others, we can fool ourselves, but Jesus knows our roots. And the now what? Let's love real. Let's love real, not fake. You guys check out this video. Thank you.